I always thought this was a cool gas station about five minutes away from Holiday World. We are at the dead center of nowhere. But hey, it's cool. It's cozy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna meet up with Jason from Coasters and Things when I get there because I've been wanting to come back here a second time this summer anyway, and he hasn't been here in a while. He couldn't find anyone from his internship at Dollywood that wanted to, to drive this far for four coasters, but they're four really good coasters, so unfortunately he just got there and he said that the entirety of Legend Lot is full, which is really bad. So yeah, we're gonna go and uh, suffer, I guess. This is ridiculous. We parked like all the way back there. I've never seen this parking lot this full before. <laughs> That's Neither crazy. have I. <laughs> yeah, we're about to find out how their parking tram system works because I've never seen this in use either. <laughs> I guess I'm spoiled by Dollywood trams. This is kind of funny. Just passed through Christmas, which is basically just the park entrance. So I was saying we both wished Christmas was a little bit bigger. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Cause right now it's just like a gift shop, a restaurant and a couple kitty rides, which it feels like Christmas should, should have a little more to it than that. But we are heading to the best area of the park first, which is Thanksgiving. That's what I do pretty much every time I'm here. <laughs> Honestly, when the new Family Boomerang opens next year, uh, between it and Voyage and Thunderbird, I could spend all day in Thanksgiving. Yeah, honestly, it was already the best area of the park because it had Voyage, Thunderbird, and Gobble Getaway. Um, and possibly the best restaurant in the park as well. Yeah, Plymouth Rock Cafe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Thanksgiving's just loaded. Honestly, I kind of was hoping that that area where Good Gravy's going would be, you know, developed into like, like a new holiday just because Thanksgiving's already so big, but Nope. I was kind of hoping for a St. Patrick's Day land, honestly. That'd be pretty cool, actually. It's the longest line I've ever seen for Voyage. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Right, coming off a voyage after an hour and 25 minute wait but uh yeah it's running a little rougher than it was earlier this year you said it was running rougher than last time you were here yeah which was three years ago yeah it's a shame because i've done a lot of track work it, it was running a little rough but i still think it's awesome i think the roughness is, is kind of part of the experience it's definitely not running as good as it was earlier this year but i might just have overhyped it after standing in a queue for over an hour yeah we gotta get something to drink and something to eat <laughs> So you would think if a park was giving free soft drinks, they would hide it, but now nah, it's clear as day and they got giant high capacity drink machines everywhere. Also new since last time I've been here, they closed their uh, Rapids ride and they put up a fence and some signage. This is incredibly weird because this ride did operate for the first few weeks of the season. And then when we were here, they said it was broken and then it ended up never running again. It's just weird, usually they would know before the season starts if a ride was going to be closing permanently, so. We both said it was probably due to budget cuts. Yeah, most likely. All right, we're eating at the Alamo. Good old nice. We both got nachos. Pretty hard to go wrong with that. It's kind of my holiday world go-to for lunch. Just finished lunch. I've kind of accepted at this point we're not going to get very many rides today because it's just so freaking crowded, but I'm not that worried since I've come here a lot and I'm sure I'll be back next summer. Kind of sucks a little more for you since you don't get, you're farther away, you don't get at, to come as much. At least I'm gonna, I know for a fact that I'm gonna try and come back here next year for the boomerang. So yeah, we're in 4th of July, which is a cute little flat ride area. And we're gonna check out the line for Liberty Launch. I still think this queue is kind of dumb, but it's all good. We're 
Oh yeah. Yeah, none of this bothers her. It doesn't bother me, but it bothers me whenever I was her age. You know? She's like, I'm good. Libby Launch is fantastic. There are not very many rides on the planet that still give me like a stomach drop feeling, but that definitely does on those rides because you get up to the top and it actually uses the compressed air to throw you back down faster than gravity, which is just such a cool feeling. Right, Libby's looking pretty short. Oh yeah, that's a very, very short line. So we'll go do that. Hopefully it's running two trains. Bro, what? They are running two trains, but what? Sure, yeah, we'll go for it. Right, we just got off a walk-on on Raven, which is nice considering we waited an, like, almost an hour and a half for Voyage this morning to have a walk-on. Makes no sense, but it's cool. It's unfair that a park has a wooden coaster this good and then two others that are both better. Than it. Yeah. You could argue Raven versus Legend, but Voyage is definitely the best by far. All right, we actually have time to do Legend and Raven now. We just did Raven walk-on, obviously, and Legend didn't have that long of a queue. We want to head into the water park around at four. But it looks like we're still gonna have time to do Raven and Legend and do that. So that's pretty nice. Hopefully the park keeps clearing out and the lines keep getting shorter as we get to the end of the day here. That'd be nice. It really would. All right, I figure if we're gonna be in line for a hot second, might as well have something to drink. And they do usually have trash cans in their queue lines. So you can do this, which is nice. Hey, look, they got some ferns for us. How sweet. <laughs> Right, that was like the full end of the Legend Redemption arc for me. That ride is awesome. We got some crazy airtime pops. It was, it was, it was absolutely nuts. You wouldn't expect airtime on a ride like Legend because it's normally all laterals. It has like two or three really good airtime pops if you're in the back. 100%. Yeah, no, I love that a lot. There was one hill where I definitely did not get airtime on any of the rides I got earlier this year. But then we flew over it and I just got ejected. It was like, what the heck? It was even more fun because I wasn't expecting it at all. But yeah, as you can tell, we're walking into Splash and Safari now, the water park. So phone's probably going to go in a locker, but I'll see y'all afterward. So for the lockers here, they actually give you a wristband that looks, works like the fun spot wristbands. Then you just find somewhere with a green light and scan and it gives you a number. Which I kind of like that system a little bit better than the passcode, personally. All right, you're, you're not a real man until you've waited two hours for Cheetah Chase. That was your first time on it, what'd you think? It was really good. Uh, it's kind of short, but it soaks you to death. Yeah. So then right after that, the other two water coaster lines were already closed because they do close lines early here. Um, but then we were able to run real quick in like the last 10 minutes or last 20 minutes the park was over. And we got a ride on the Mat Racer, which was a decent Mat Racer. Yeah. Not, not the best, but not the worst. Okay, Airtime, it gets you in the face though. Yeah, then we did, I think it was Zynga was what it was called. Yeah. Which is my first of the Pro Slide Tornado slides I've done. And that was pretty fun. I got to go backwards down the trap, so yeah. <laughs> and I have that compared to the other tornadoes you've done. I like that one better. 
Oh, okay. Nice. Yep, so the water park is closed for the evening. I don't have a hairbrush, so just don't mind this. Yeah, we're gonna head up to Thunderbird because we haven't been up there at all today. And I'm gonna grab a construction updated good gravy as I go by. So you'll see that as a separate video probably before this comes out. So, yeah. I'm gonna do that while it's still light outside because it is starting to get a little sunsetty a little earlier than I expected. An hour and 50 minutes until the best night ride in the world. Yeah, we're gonna do Voyage at night. It's gonna be great. I don't think I will be back to Holiday World again this year to film another construction update. That's probably it for me, but I'm sure somebody else will. And if not, I hope to be there for at least the opening month, if not opening weekend, of Good Gravy in the spring. Yeah, I've already turned on the light packages for the night on a lot of the rides, which is pretty cool. Yeah, first time we haven't been up into the Thunderbird Enclave like at all today. So, nice. I love the way this whole plaza up here is done. Hoping for a short wait on Thunderbird. So nice up here. Really hope they keep up this level of theming and stuff for the park going forward. I love how every time a train launches, all the lights flicker, as you just saw. It's a cool touch. Yeah, normally there's like a really deep thunder rumbling when the train dispatches that shakes the entire station, it feels like. But as you can tell, that's not working for some reason. It's worked every other time I'm here, so. As you can see, Thunderbird's queue is closed. They close queues early here. We just got our ride. They close queues early to make sure everyone's through by closing. Um, but since Thunderbird had like a 40 minute queue, they closed it 40 minutes early. So we really wanted to get a Voyage night ride. It's pretty dusky right now, but I'm tempering my expectations that that queue might be closed when we get there, which is really annoying. I do get from the park's perspective, they want their employees to be able to go home on time. But I do prefer like the Dollywood and many other park approach where the queues stay open till the closing time. Everyone's guaranteed a ride and they just either pay the employees over time or schedule them later if they know it's going to be a busy day. All right, we're about to turn the corner see, to the see. entrance of Voyage. Moment of truth. I'm so nervous. This, this is the reason we came today instead of earlier in the week and we dealt with these crowds. I'm actually so scared. Please be open. What? Oh. Well, here's the negative about closing queues early approach. It's 30 minutes till the park closes and like all the lines are already closed. It's definitely flashbacks to about a month ago when I went to get my second ride and first night ride on Olympia Looping and uh, all the lights were shut off. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty equally annoyed. I'm driving all the way back to Nashville tonight. I'm not going to get back till like one in the morning, which is a pretty tough drive to do and I was really only doing that to get a night ride and voyage that we're not going to get now so I am pretty frustrated. Here's grandma. Um, Gobbler Getaway's queue is still open because it's a lot shorter so I guess we will do this. <laughs> Alright Jason beat me at Gobbler Getaway. I have 960. He's at 1170. They're both apparently beginners though. So, yeah. We'll check that out. They already have good gravy merch in the Voyage gift shop. Dude, they already have the Made to Thrill poster and everything. They had all this ready to go the second they announced it. They were like, all right, stick it out. Wait, wait. They have a G. Williger shirt. All right, we'll stand here and lament for another second. Although we both got a shirt. I pushed put mine in my backpack, but we both got the same shirt. So many enthusiasts have this shirt, but we had to join the class. It is a cool shirt. 
<laughs> yeah, we, we were so mad that we didn't get to ride the ride that we went and bought a shirt. <laughs> I'm sure that makes sense. It is kind of cool. The only time that I'd been here at night was when we watched the drone show uh, and nothing was operating. So it's kind of cool to see stuff operating at night. It's just the queue closing policy here, not good. Overall, I still love this park. One bad day is not enough to ruin it for me, but this is certainly the worst visit I've ever had here, like by far. If it's you're gonna close a line for a coaster off, make an announcement that you're closing it off at a certain time. Yeah, yeah, just so many policies with that and then just how slow all their operations were. Things that aren't really a big problem when you come on a weekday like I normally do and the park's mostly empty, but when the park is slammed, it, it you know, all those rough edges show and they show really bad. So I still think this is a great park. I still think they do a lot of things right that a lot of other parks can learn from, uh, but they just need to fix their, how they operate their rides, uh, coasters specifically. It is really bad. Yeah, so I, I usually try to keep a, a positive attitude for the most part, especially with this kind of thing, but yeah, this was not a good day. <laughs> so there's Holiday World's bicycle parking. I guess there are some bike lanes around here. I noticed on the way in, so I guess if you live really close by, you could bike here, but... Uh... And now we're walking all the way to the back of Legend Lot where both of us are parked because they're not running any parking trams. Stupid. Thanks, Holiday World. What a what a hike this is. Yeehaw. Could, could be worse, could be Dollywood. <laughs> yeah, but at least Dollywood runs their trams consistently until the whole parking lot's empty. <laughs> true, yeah, that's true. All right, well, thanks to Jason from Coasters and Things for uh, joining me today. Sorry you didn't have a good Holiday World experience. Uh, I have had good Holiday World experiences yeah. in the past, in 2018 and 2020. This visit was not that good. Yeah, as someone that really loves Holiday World a lot, this is really disappointing. All right, well, this drive home is gonna suck, especially since we didn't get the Voyage Night Ride. You know, actually, this is the first time that I've ever been to Holiday World and have not ridden Howler. So maybe that was the problem. Maybe if I had ridden Howler, everything would have worked out differently. I'll remember that for next time. Stopped in Franklin, Kentucky to get those 11 p.m. chicken McNuggets because I haven't eaten dinner. But anyways, had some time on the drive to think some more about the day and overall, when it comes to theme parks especially, I'm a pretty positive person. I like to just have a good time for the most part because because like most coaster enthusiasts, this is one of my main passions and hobbies. So of course I want to have a good time while I'm doing it. But the truth is, you're just going to have bad days sometimes like today, days that aren't the best. That's going to happen. It just makes the, the good days that much better. I never want to try to f just find the problems and everything, but at the same time, as coaster and theme park enthusiasts, we should want the industry to get better. Like most things, the only way that things are going to get better is if we have healthy discussions about the things that aren't so great. I, mean, I think criticism is very different than just trying to find problems and everything. And my main criticism of Holiday World today, and I'm sure Jason would agree, is that the operations were bad in, in terms of efficiency. The, the, there was no efficiency. I've definitely experienced worst at parks, but like when we were in line for Voyage, they were stacking like every single cycle with two trains. There's no reason that on a coaster with over 6,000 feet of track you should be stacking. It just, in my opinion, there's just no excuse for it. That shouldn't be happening when you have an hour and 30 minute line. I've kind of recognized at this point in my life that a lot of things in life you just have to wait in line for, especially at theme parks. So overall, I don't really mind waiting in long lines when I feel like they're doing their best to get you through the line. But when it's a situation like this, then I tend to get a little bit unhappy about it because I know that objectively they're not doing everything they could to be keeping that line moving as fast as possible. It wasn't just like they were being held up by something in the station every time. The operators were checking restraints kind of leisurely compared to what I see at most other parks. This is pretty standard for Holiday World and it's not a problem when the park isn't busy, but when the park gets slammed like it did today, then you know all the rough edges start to show. I also know we were both pretty frustrated at the end there since we had planned this whole day around trying to get night rides on Voyage. We were both pretty frustrated. We weren't able to do that since they closed the queue 45 minutes early. So to be clear, I understand Holiday World's policy that they want all their employees to get out of there, be able to shut down and get out of there at park closing, whatever. So they close queues early. It all comes back to that operational efficiency thing though that Yes, I know that given the way that they're operating, there's probably about 45 minutes worth of people in that queue, so close the queue 45 minutes early. But as Jason said, having been a ride operator himself, if they really stepped on the gas, so to speak, they could probably chew through all those people in 20 minutes. 
and they could leave the queue open later. Just really hurts the guest experience when it's 45 minutes before closing and all of the major rides are already closed. That's why in general, I think that the closing queues early method of closing down a park is kind of silly. I prefer the approach that the queues stay open until park closing and then everyone that's in the queue is guaranteed a ride. I know then you say the employees have to stay later, but then you just schedule the employees later. When I worked at Publix, a grocery store last summer, if you had closing shift, the, the store might close at 10 and you'd be scheduled till like 10.30 or 11 because they know that you're not leaving at 10. So I imagine that's how most other parks do it when they close the queues at closing. It just makes more sense to me. Like if you really want your employees to be out of there by nine, then close the park at eight instead of nine. This just creates a weird situation where even on a not so busy day, you know, it's 15, 20 minutes before park close and all the rides are closed. So the park kind of is already closed, even though it's technically not closed yet. It just doesn't really make much sense. Of course, these are all just my opinions. You certainly might feel differently, but the main takeaway from this day, I think, is Holiday World just does not manage crowds very well. I still obviously recommend you go to the park. It's still one of my favorite parks of all time just because of the charm, how good their four major rides are. And it's just a great park, I think. Just not great to visit when it's slammed like today or even mostly busy. So if you're gonna visit Holiday World, I would urge you to try your best to visit on a weekday and preferably a weekday on a week that you think is not gonna be as crowded. Obviously this is a weekend and one of the last weekends of the summer for most people. So that definitely didn't help. So yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm gonna be doing any more theme park trips before I go back to school in like two weeks. Then of course you'll see some Dollywood content because it's my home park and I'm obviously a season pass holder, but don't expect a, a lot of theme park trips in the near future because because I'm totally broke from spending half my summer in London and not working at all. It's probably just a little Dollywood and that should give me some time to work on some review videos and some other stuff like that I've been wanting to do for a long time and just, just haven't had time to. So thank you so much for watching. Sorry this one was a little bit of a downer. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to see my future theme park adventures and I hope to catch a much better ride with you again very soon. In reality though, everything's all right because we got one ride on Voyage and one ride is better than no rides. Yeah, it wasn't running as good today, but I'm not taking it back. It's still the ultimate wooden coaster. Yeah, it's a little bit rough, but that's kind of part of the experience. I'm a Voyage fanboy. I'm not ashamed to admit it.